Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. A lot of great items this last week. I'm gonna dub this one the Women of Power BI because all the main items are from women. I also wanna let folks know that we are doing live streams here on Guy in a Cube. They are going to be Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Central Time. We had our first one this last Saturday on February 22nd with Chris Wagner. You can go check that out. It was a great time. We had a lot of fun communicating with everyone in the chat. It was, I'm gonna be honest, it was a little nuts on my end. It was crazy to keep up with all of that. So check it out, Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. All right, with that, let's dig in. Imka Feldman's got a blog post where she put together a Excel equivalent to network days from Power Query. This is a function that she has in the blog post that you can just copy and paste into Power Query, and it'll give you that same functionality as Network Days does in Excel. And so the idea of Network Days is you can give it a start and end date, it will give you all of the dates, excluding weekends and whatever holidays that you pass into it. And so this is a great way to get the number of days excluding those items that you can then use in like your calendar table. This is just a great example of how the community works to help you just extend Power BI to do things that aren't there in the box. So check out the blog post down in the description below. Shabnam Watson has got a blog post looking at Power Apps inside of Power BI integration doing right back. This blog post goes through all the gory details of how to actually set this up from the Power BI side and the Power App side, actually creating the Power App. I also love, she's got some visuals in there that just kind of a high level explain like how this works, which is awesome. And I know a lot of folks ask for this right back type capability. Power Apps is definitely a way that you can go about doing that. And Shabnam's got you covered in this blog post. There's a lot of details inside of it. So if this is, if right back is something that you're interested in inside of Power BI, definitely check out this blog post. Links down below, including links for all the items in this week's roundup and some bonus items. So go check it out. Melissa Coates has a blog post looking at what permissions are owned by Power BI content owners. There's actually two videos in there, it's a two-parter. And she goes through and walks through like what are those specific items, whether it's an app, whether it's a report, workspaces, all of that. I love the detail that she puts in this and anything admin related is near and dear to my heart. She also has a diagram that she put together that you can download as a PDF, which just visually explains that permission flow within content inside of Power BI. So go download that diagram, then head over to YouTube and watch Melissa's two videos on this topic. One of the big announcements last week is the fact that incremental refresh is now available for pro users. It's not just a premium feature. And so Ruth Pozuelo over at Kerbal's YouTube channel has a video looking at how to actually use incremental refresh as a pro user and explains all the ins and outs of incremental refresh. There are some caveats that you need to be aware of when using incremental refresh, whether that's pro or premium. One of the big items there is query folding. So Ruth walks you through those items and lets you know how this works. All right, we got the Power BI desktop release for February 2020. It is now available, and there were some updates that went along with it. Sujata from the Power BI desktop team walks you through a blog post that covers those items. Two items that came from ideas.powerbi.com. The first one is the incremental refresh, which I talked about before. The other is the hierarchy slicer. So Jan Peter has had a hierarchy slicer as a custom visual for a long time, but a lot of folks have asked to have this native with inside of Power BI desktop and it's now there in preview. So make sure you go to the preview features and check the checkbox, restart Power BI desktop, and then you'll be good to go. And it really just works like the regular slicer. You can just add additional fields there and have that hierarchy inside. There were also some updates to the title bar and also accessibility items. So one big thing you may notice is the save button is back, yay! And of course, there were other items listed out in the blog post as well, so definitely check it out. Be sure to update Power BI Desktop to the latest version. Also, just a word of caution, check out support.powerbi.com. When this was originally released, there were a few items where folks couldn't actually open existing Power BI Desktop files. As of the recording of this video, that should be fixed, but just check out support.powerbi.com to be sure. When I looked just before recording this, it said that a fix went out by the end of day, February 22nd, to address that issue. So just, you know, word of caution, just be aware of it, and now you know. 
All right, I want to hand this over to you. What do you guys think? What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.